starting my sixth decade of endurance racing and one thing I come across quite often is athletes saying you know my training was spot on I did everything right and a lot of times I'll look at their training and they did do it correctly I mean that's a rarity because I find over the six decades that most people don't train and then just kind of wing it and so whatever results they get are the results they get but I do feel bad for people who definitely put some thought into their training and get the same result over and over a result that they don't want mainly blowing up having some physical issues be it nausea uh you know leg cramps pains foot care uh and nothing you know because structural issues happen from time to time bad knee or something you can't you know do anything about that you got to stop it's a structural injury but you know just those soft tissue type of things that you know you wonder why they keep happening and why it keeps happening is that little tiny things make up big problems you know, little tiny percentages add up that's why las vegas is so uh, you know does so well how do you think they keep the lights on or anything it's because the house has a tiny percentage but that tiny percentage makes billions of dollars well your racing is the same way you're in fact i think it almost hurts people who are well prepared um you know uh recently zach bitter who's got the world record 100 the 12 hour wanted to do an entire 24 and he just trained a little bit too much and got toasted you know nothing is Zach. i really like him but you know just that kind of thing but also just when you're racing something and you train well, you get there, you're excited, and you go just a second or two a mile too fast, or you stay on a pace a little too long, or anything like that, it builds up, and then it just comes cascading down along your head, all over you. And what you gotta do is you just gotta monitor things and hold back. I mean, that's why most world records in all sports, endurance sports, swimming, running, you know, all come with negative splits, or at least even splits. You know, you can't hold on. And so it's just those little things that make such a big difference. Um, I think one of the issues people do have too, is especially newer athletes that I come across, jump into the sport later in life, and maybe don't understand that, but also they didn't come up through the system with coaching and competition. And that's one of the big, huge things, is I meet so many people who are doing their, a marathon or a ultra, and I'll be like, hey, what's your 10K time? And they're like, oh, I've never run one. I just, my first race was a marathon. And what it is, is you come up through the system like I did, you know, running a mile back when I was 16. Those are less little experiments that you can control and repeatable so you can learn there of your ways. Uh, the great Bill Schultz, multi-day racer, six day, also ran across the country. He always says every race is like a mile, four laps. And the problem is, if you put all your eggs in your big basket, you know, a marathon or whatever is big to you, you know, that's a big, huge experiment with a lot of time invested and it can blow up in your face spectacularly. You know, you're handling like, you know, nuclear materials where if you run like mile races or 5Ks, um, you can, it's like, you know, doing a, you know, one of those volcanoes with the baking soda and vinegar, you know, it's not gonna be you know catastrophic if you fail and you try new things so what i'm trying to say is when you do the smaller shorter races like myself i still do 5ks and things you learn just those little tricks and you learn where those percentages just lie so that you don't go out in that 5k blast through the first mile and then suffer the consequences even though the consequences are a lot smaller than they are in big events so that's what i'm trying to say is You've got to do experiments, granted this year with COVID, you don't get to race as much, but do time trials. You wanna make your training miserable. Like right now, I'm beat up and tired. So that when you're in a race, you're like, oh yeah, I've been here before. You, you know, and the worst thing you wanna do is you don't wanna be a practice pony. You wanna be a race day horse. So as always, stay healthy, be boring, not epic.